What's up guys, Kyokai1994 here today to talk to you about anything, you guessed it, Dragon Ball. From Ball to Z and everything in between, and today, continuing the trend of Dragon Ball side stories on my channel, I want to talk to you guys about a great martial artist I would like to see more material made about. To help me dive in and hash out these ideas in today's video, I will be introducing for the very first time on my channel a very special guest. A man with more subs than One Piece episodes, and a laugh better than Light Yagami. Mr. Ninja Star, welcome to the channel. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Mr. Ninja Star, or Ninja as everyone likes to call me. Proud to be on Kyokai 1994's channel. The dude makes some awesome content, really knows what he's talking about when it comes to Dragon Ball, and, you know, it's always fun discussing uh, video topics with this guy. He's been on my channel before, and the and the video we did together was really fun but i am definitely going to leave a link to ninja's channel in the description below and i definitely want you guys to check him out since he wanted to try to promote promote me now i got to promote him even though that's what i was already going to do uh, he does a bunch of Dragon Ball content, but that's not the only thing that he does on his channel. He puts out videos on One Piece and franchises I know that we both enjoy skimming the pages through from time and time, Death Note, which is a really good series, and I do recommend people watching that as well. Uh, but he also has these, like, what I would call, like, real-world philosophies that he puts out on his channel every once in a while, kind of like, a people do their little, you know, life chats and everything, and, and they're really interesting to watch, and I really feel that you guys will see how much of a nice and sincere guy he is as much as I have, and I want you guys to go over and subscribe to his channel and check out his videos, because I promise that you're going to find something that you enjoy about his channel. But today, again, we already did, uh, you already saw the title, you already saw a thumbnail, whatever it was, you probably see a picture on the screen right now, but, uh, I really want to see more of these side stories going around the great fighter that we call Muten Roshi. And uh, so, we have two ideas for this video that I really wanted to kind of hash out with you, Ninja. And the first one that I was really thinking about was Master Roshi's adventures to gather all of the collection that he has shown and talked about through Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Uh, in the original Dragon Ball, uh, whenever you know, Goku helps save his turtle, the sea turtle Kame, uh, he decides he wants to give him a gift. He wants to originally give him this immortal phoenix that has helped Master Roshi, you know, become the ripe young age that he is. But there is a bit of a problem because the immortal phoenix has kind of kicked the bucket. So uh, he has to give him the Nimbus Cloud. And it's really interesting because it's, it's implied that at one time Master Roshi could fly on the Nimbus Cloud and he has full control of it because he definitely called it to where they were and uh, now he does not have any control of it. He, uh, he actually cannot fly on it himself. But he has this list of items that he has uh, talked about and in the dub they change it to other things such as magic carpets and stuff like that. But uh, I want to see personally how he got these because in my head because all of these dragon ball side stories are just headcanon that i've been thinking about for time periods uh i want to see him collecting them because i feel again that this was not at the beginning of his life this was something that he got after his immortality and i guess it's not full immortality but his his uh his great aging process is what i'll call it i guess for that little bit but uh during those years that he's had on his island and everything, it, it gets boring. You know, you wanna you wanna go adventure and and find that you know one piece of treasure that takes eight hundred and is it eight hundred episodes or nine hundred episodes? Uh, they, they actually just hit their eight hundredth episode right now, so that's got to be kind of cool. Okay, so just about eight hundred episodes to find that one piece of treasure. But Master Roshi didn't do that just once. He's done that several times to find a lot of these, and uh, I am kind of rambling on it, but. Personally, I would like to see how he got some of these things. I don't know about you, Ninja. Right. I completely agree with what you said due to the fact that, you know, he's had so many of these items collective probably over, let's say, he's around, he's around what's he, like 300 years old, a little over that probably. So he's really old, you know. Um, and we've never seen, like, how he got all these items because I can tell that he... I, I don't really think they were all just given to him like randomly one day. I think he collected them over the course of a few years. Like maybe he got the Nimbus when he was like, I don't know, 40 or something like that. Maybe he got 
you know, the turtle when he was like 80 or something like that. Um, you know, it really does depend. And we never really got to see some insight on how he got all this stuff from the original Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z or anything like that. And I, I kind of wish we did, though, because I understand that, you know, it, w it was kind of a small detail. There was it was kind of just for design purposes and to make Roshi look a little more wacky and stuff uh, kind of add to his character. But I don't really think adding and adding like no insight to it was a great idea because if we saw these like little just detail like not even detail but like these little objects or anything like that that wouldn't seem like much that are kind of goofy but just kind of are forgettable actually have like a cool really cool history behind it we're actually like the result of like a huge adventure that Roshi went through you know maybe it was with Shen or something like that I don't know uh that would be really interesting to see because as we know, you know, Shen was kind of Roshi's rival when he was younger and stuff like that. So maybe the two are embarked on an adventure. Maybe the two, maybe like Shen lost a bet and owed something to Roshi. And thus, maybe that's one of his objects or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's really interesting to think about because all these cool items aren't really, like we never really see any idea of how they actually got there. So it would be really cool. Like, oh, th that's how that happened. Okay, it was from that really cool adventure. And then maybe we get like a flashback to it or something like that. I don't know. That's my rambling. What are your thoughts? No, yeah, okay. like that. that's exactly what I want out of this uh i mean i've mentioned that i want to see like one shot volumes of like 10 chapters of a lot of these ideas because they don't need to continue and make everything super in depth just enough to make the character fill out a little bit more because i mean these characters are i mean dragon ball i want to say i believe started in 84 and I can be corrected in the comments if you guys, if I'm wrong or whatever, but I believe it's 84 was when Dragon Ball actually came out. And so they've been out for over 30 years and we don't have full character backgrounds on all the, the what I would say the main cast in it. Cause I really like side characters. Like I love Goku, I love Vegeta, but th there's tropes that they're gonna play into and there's stereotypes that they're gonna fit into. But these side characters don't have to fit into those stereotypes. And seeing these well-rounded, fully fledged characters just come out of something that someone made 30 years ago is just a very, very interesting way to have like a creation go full circle because even though Toriyama has his hands on everything, it's slowing down. His involvement is going to slow down. I mean, Torotaru's going to take over. I mean, he loves Dragon Ball. He's a huge Dragon Ball fan. And this is definitely something that him or Dragon Gero Lee or somebody like that can actually do. Somebody who can mimic the older style. But with these adventures to find the items, it doesn't have to be long volumes. But with quick manga panels and that's the thing you can do with manga that's great you can do very quick gags that show deep history which you could actually connect into mm, I, Dragon Ball isn't set on our earth or oh, well it is set on earth but not on our time like they don't have the same wars and everything but it would be interesting to see them introduce some kind of like locations and things like that so we can bring it to the real world a little bit as fans and try to gain some more enjoyment out of it and you can quickly make a gag manga which is what dragon ball kind of started out to be even though it turned into this insanely awesome martial arts fighting book it, it started off a lot like his work dr slump before that it's a gag manga it's comedy and, and that's what you can do with these adventures, and especially with a character like Master Roshi and all of his problems, you could definitely make him trying to, like, the day he can't ride the Nimbus Cloud anymore, and him having to find Baby Gamera, or however he obtains Baby Gamera, that would be hilarious to me. That That's just how I feel that these side stories could make any Dragon Ball fan who really, really appreciates these characters very happy, especially since that's what they're trying to do with the Dragon Ball room. They're trying to extend the franchise and make more mangas for us. So that's that's kind of what my full feelings are on that adventure story. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you said it greatly. Um, it's so not. It would be so cool if, like, uh, as we know, you know, Dragon Ball Super right now is in this is not really the same show that you know Dragon Ball was 30 years ago or something like that. But 
like what you were saying, you know, because this was earlier Dragon Ball when, you know, uh, the, these goofy things were being introduced and stuff like that, it was, you know, a little more closer to the time Toriyama made Dr. Slump, and to have potentially, like, that humor, maybe that earlier Dragon Ball humor, also that kind of, like, late Dr. Slump humor being played in now would actually be really interesting due to the fact that they've actually done stuff from the original Dragon Ball that we would have never thought would appear in Super and, you know, they end up happening, such as the Arale episode, such as Mafu bobbing and um, incorporating the future Trunks arc, it shows that, you know, they do have this type of stuff, and even if it's not Dragon Ball Super, even if it's like a little manga chapter or something like that, just a little fun one-shot, it would still be very fascinating to see how the Sechi comes about, maybe even, like, give us those memories watching the original Dragon Ball, give us the same amount of humor as we did watching or reading the original Dragon Ball, so that's basically all my rambling-ons, um, what is the next side story for Master Roshi in, uh, in your thoughts? So, I, I think I've said this before in my video, I may have said it in somebody else's video, uh, but, no, 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 it was my video, that's funny, it was the last video I did with Nathan, uh, me and him both feel, Frozen Particle, uh, is Nathan, by the way, if, for anybody watching that doesn't know, uh, me and him have the feeling that Dragon Ball Super and the banner of creations of things that are going to come out as Dragon Ball Super is going to have to come to an end soon. We're definitely coming towards the end of Z, that of the time gap, and actually hitting the end of Z. And after Z, I don't want to see them continue Super. I don't want the show that is going to live on after Super being, or well, live on after Z being Dragon Ball Super. I want it to have either go back to the name Dragon Ball or, or have some kind of some kind of like everlasting title so that they can just continue to do everything uh but like i said i want the side stories to really be these manga chapters and there's glimpses of roshi's past in dragon ball with like i said the adventures and like when you find out about baba and and all of his training that they try to show to you know extend his character through the franchise while it was being made uh, I want to see more of that training. They do a flashback episode where Goku goes back and actually sees Master Roshi training under Mutaito, and that is kind of the time period that I would like to see. It was a very enjoyable episode for me. Uh, a lot of people, you know, talk bad about filler and talk bad about, like, slice of life and things like that, but, th but that's what makes it, again, well-rounded for me and filling out these characters it makes me feel even more attached to the series than I already am. I have a huge attachment to this series and that that is really emotional. Uh, now, I'm not going to say there aren't other people in the community that have that. Obviously, everybody has the things that they love. But this, to me personally, is just something that is very emotionally attached and in my childhood. Like, just, just everything. So, me seeing Master Roshi train and him with like actually starting his rivalry with Shin and seeing all of their training and all the techniques that they learned because I mean we haven't even seen a fraction of Master Roshi's techniques I mean he keeps reusing all the old ones from Dragon Ball but you know there's things that he knew when he was younger that he probably can still pull out of nowhere I mean it, it just because you know how to do it doesn't mean you have to do it all the time and sometimes you don't get put into the circumstances that you have to use it so definitely seeing Master Roshi and Shin doing their rivalry and, you know, fighting over the girls and everything like that, you can make it really gaggy, but with that section of time period, you're also going to have plenty of action because you're going to have Mutaito teaching them as much as they can. They're right in their prime age of being a human. I mean, we're talking like 18 to 26. It's like adulthood and everything. It's It's... It's gonna be something that's gonna be not super alpha, but it's something that could have a good balance of both alpha-like fights and gaggy manga, nose bloody or nose bleeding like jokes and everything. I don't know how you feel about that time period. My thoughts on that time period, I feel like it was a little underutilized, kind of like the uh, the objects thing, but it would have been so interesting to see this other side of Roshi that we've never seen before, like what you were saying. This other side of Roshi that, uh, how he actually came to be, because, you know, we, we, we did see a little bit of it, you know, we saw, a like, flashbacks here and there of his earlier days. Uh, some of it was filler, some of it was canon. Um, 
you know, it was stuff like that that we got to see a little more about Roshi's backstory, but at the same time, wasn't really anything else. Uh, we never really saw, like, how he came to be such a great martial artist. One of the, probably one of the best martial artists, like, humans in on Earth, you know, not including, like, you know, Sans or Namekians or anything like that. Um, Roshi was very strong, very good for his time, very good for, in his prime, as a matter of fact, as well. So, it would have been interesting to see maybe another, like, some other stuff he did when he was younger. Um, his, like, rivalry with Shen kind of built up over time. Maybe they have a little <laughs> interaction with, like, um, maybe, you know, they have a fun little perverted interaction or something like that with girls or something like that. That would be, uh, that would be really funny if we see that, um. It also comes down to it, like, when you jump from this little random guy to this random old master who's already good enough as well, already has these techniques out of nowhere, it just kind of feels so way too fast. If we see the build-up towards what that happened, or maybe even, like, an episode or chapter or something like that, at least we get an idea, like, okay, this is how he came to be. This is the type of training he went through and stuff like that, and... It's stuff like that that kind of adds a little more depth to a character, adds a little more depth to how they came to be and stuff like that. And I think his tra his training with Mutaito, how he honored, you know, Mutaito's legacy and stuff after, uh... After Mutaito's death would be really interesting to see how that turns out. His interactions with Mutaito when he was younger as well. Uh, maybe Mutaito, you know, has to get on Shen and Roshi for being complete perverts at times here and there, you know. Maybe we get a fun little interaction right there. Um, but at the end of the day, it would just do so much more for Master Roshi. So much more for the audience, as a matter of fact. Because this character who we would never think, like, has a certain side of him. We'd always think of him as that old pervert. Maybe we see him a little more as a younger one. And we're like, oh, that explains it and stuff like that so yeah that's just my ram leon what are your thoughts no yeah so definitely want to see him you know explore his younger life but you could even do it as a longer manga like maybe like a three part or a four part or something like that uh and i mean uh, i say four part but i mean a four volume so i'm talking i'm talking about like 20 chapters something like that uh, what you could really do is you could have him as an old man at the beginning reflecting upon his life and the things that he's done and if worse comes to worse say they don't make two because I understand they're not making two different manga chapters you could in intermingle the two ideas that we've had today into one I mean you could have him as an old man reflecting upon things that he's done over his whole life how he's gotten to the place where he is and even in that since it's like 20, 25 chapters, you could really dive into him being a child, not a child, but you could really dive into that, that, uh, younger years of training. And then after his training and the death of his master and all of that and the, you know, the world being, you know, ruled and everything, we could, we could definitely see him start going on adventures because maybe he just wanted to enjoy his life a little bit more. So I, I do think that fulfilling at least one side story of master roshi would be very very good for the dragon ball room to put out but that that's where i'm gonna kind of uh, cut off the video for myself i don't know if you have any last words that you'd like to put out on it um i actually I, it's just a few ones right here but as you know um you mentioned earlier that I'm really in One Piece, and I th feel like, I don't know if Toyotaro would ever do this, but I feel like this would actually be a really interesting element for how they could fit, fit these side stories in. So basically, what Ichido Oda does with One Piece, you know, I, I don't mean to get too off topic, but you you'll see what I'm talking about in a sec. Um, oh, it's he completely does, fine. Yeah, he does these things with each chapter, because One Piece comes out weekly, um... And the manga and everything in Shonen Jump. What he does is for the cover story, like the cover, like the cover of the manga before, you know, the pages start and everything like that. The cover, you know, usually it comes down to what other mangaka do. It's usually like a certain shot in the actual, in, what happens in that chapter. Like for Dragon Ball, you know, maybe it's Marzamasu uh, looking at Vegeta or something like that. Maybe that could be like a cover right there. But what Ichida Oda does, it's a little different than what another mangaka would do. Instead, sure, the title is there and all, but he does like the title for the chapter and stuff like that But he doesn't really have the co main cover be what's going on in that chapter It's actually something completely different and what he basically does are like cover stories So there are certain characters in one piece that we haven't seen
scenes for like what let's say 400 episodes or not 400 chapters but what Oda does is sometimes he does this thing it's like where are they now and it shows like this character who we would have never thought to be like right now what they're all doing right now we even see stuff like how a certain character got to a place like sure in, in the anime do they do this with filler but in the manga you know they can't really do filler so what they do is like show how he got from this place to another this place for to another so it'd be really cool if Toyotara actually does cover stories for you know Dragon Ball Super instead of making the main cover like what goes on in the chapter and this is how the like the Roshi thing can come about and stuff like that it would be really interesting if he did that I don't think it will though because with them um, with something monthly you can't really do anything like that and you know chapters tend to be like 20 20 to 30 pages and when you have like 20 to different uh 20 to 30 different cover stories it's gonna take forever to wrap up so yeah that's just what i had to say i i want to get that off my chest because i was really thinking about it and stuff and yeah i'm not i'm not really a huge one piece fan i've watched maybe one or two episodes but i will say I give the writer, and because I'm assuming he he does both the writing and the the artistry inside of it, uh, I give him props for not forgetting his characters like certain people we know in the Dragon Ball franchise. But uh, I definitely want you guys to check out Mr. Ninja's channel, uh, Mr. Ninja Star. I just call him Ninja. But, uh, so I want you guys to check out Mr. Ninja Star's channel. His link is going to be in the description below. Uh, I'm also going to leave the description for the video that we did together on his channel down in the description below as well, so you guys can check that out. Uh, I want you guys to go over there, hit the sub button, hit his bell button, hit his likes button if you enjoy his videos, and definitely leave him feedback because, I mean, he... He's definitely doing very well for himself that I can see and it's great to see my friends and the people that I work with and the people that I enjoy doing content with growing and seeing all of us grow together as a community. So I definitely want you guys to go support him as well and I want you guys to like this video if you enjoyed our uh, thoughts on Master Roshi. I want you guys to comment in the comment section below what you want to see happen with Master Roshi. Maybe you don't want to see anything happen with Master Roshi. Maybe there's somebody else in the Dragon Ball franchise you want to see something like this happen with. And I want you guys to tell me that down in the comment section below. I'm definitely going to check out everything everyone says. And I will be responding to ideas and trying to, you know, hash out ideas with you guys as well. And I want you guys to give me topics that I can talk to you about that you want to see come from the Dragon Ball room. But... For the final thing, I want you guys to sub to my channel, hit the bell button so you guys can be notified anytime that I actually upload. Uh, I am now trying to upload two times a week. I'm doing one discussion video a week, like what this, or a theory video, or whatever you would like to call this. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing more Doken on my channel, so I already have one video up, and I will be having another video this week coming out that you'll really enjoy because you'll get to see something funny happen. But, uh, so I definitely want to say bye to you guys, and I want you guys to enjoy your day. Catch you next time. Bye!